I'm Asher Avon. My, my pronouns are they, them. Awesome. And I'm Catherine James, uh, Oklahoma's very first uh, TV reporter who happened to be a transgender woman. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I know uh, you're putting in a lot of groundwork here with TACO. Mm -hmm. um, let's just start there. Uh, what was the need for TACO? What, what was that like, just uh, being able to advocate and work like that? Well, the, the need arose for Trans Advocacy Coalition of Oklahoma, also known as TACO, yeah. Um, because last year, around February, January, we were seeing a lot of bills anti-LGBT, but specifically trans bills come in. Many bathroom bills and just trying to restrict gender-affirming care. And we couldn't sit by and just let it keep happening. So we decided to step up. Um, a lot of us, it just started in a room together as friends. You're from Oklahoma, right? Yeah, born where, and raised. Where at, Tulsa or? Um, I was born in Pryor, Oklahoma, um, but I lived in Inola most of my life. You're non-binary and also indigenous. Mm -hmm. Just talk to me about um, both of those, any aspect of that, however you would like to frame it and talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've been a part of the Cherokee Nation since I was born, but um, I haven't really, I haven't really gotten to know what that means for me yet. And that's why it makes me so sad that Next Benedict didn't get the opportunity to really explore their identity. Um, I've been trying just to read, read books about the Cherokee Nation, what they went through, um, especially to get here to Oklahoma but other indigenous tribes as well, um, because we've all faced similar oppression. As for being a non-binary, um, for a long time, I've just never felt like I was really a woman or a man. I was just kind of something, something else. I was just me, you know? Uh, talk to me about the first time you kind of made that discovery, was it? Um just kind of a feeling that built over time, or just talk to me about that. Yeah, I would say it was a feeling that built over time. Like, I never strongly fit into the women perspective growing up. I was always, I was always pushed into keeping up my appearance in ways that I thought were constricting to me, when especially the boys in my life didn't have to do that. Um, I think that's probably where it started. Um, you know, I was pushing back against that because I didn't want to do it. It didn't feel right for me. Um, and that was, you know, once I became an adult, I moved down to my parents' house. I let myself have that freedom of not shaving my legs and my underarms and stuff. And that was the beginning. And wearing clothes that were deemed male or um, but I, I still wore skirts, I still wear dresses, you know, that doesn't, clothes don't have a gender. Um, yeah, clothes don't have a gender, um, they're just fabric, especially as like a seamstress, I definitely feel that way. Um, and it built over time, you know, I, I used to cosplay a lot in high school and I would do male and female characters and there was just always kind of this oh, I kind of wish I, I was more like this sometimes. You know, that push and pull of my gender kind of built over time, and now I have more clear ideas of what I feel like I am and what my body should look like and what I should be wearing just because of how I feel. Explain what it's like being trans, non-binary, mm -hmm. also indigenous, that intersectionality here in Oklahoma. It's difficult. Um, it's like walking on eggshells every time I go outside. I often don't feel safe to walk or go places alone um, by myself. It's hard to live feeling so restricted um, that anything could happen at any time. It seems like it's stemming from rhetoric coming from the very top. I mean, and it's 
Like you say, it's affecting the youth most of all, mm -hmm. and it, it's affecting all of us. Not only is our pay terrible here, um, it's if you're if you're having to look for a commute a job that is truly LGBT friendly and will protect you. It, it, it can narrow your choices down. I actually was fired in January uh, by uh, the station I was on TV for. It's hard to work for a local company here and think I'm gonna be protected. Or, you know, if a customer comes and says, you know, slurs against me, is the owner going to side with the customer? And I was even a local public figure of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I still can't go anywhere in Tulsa. Um, sometime during the week, someone's going to recognize me and say, you're the news lady. Mm -hmm. When I was on TV, it would be every day. And even a person with a following like that, it didn't even matter in the face of everything. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted a reason, they found a reason, and then I was gone. Before 2023, I would just, I would stand on the sidelines. I, I would be completely supportive of LGBTQ, um, basically just in word only. I wasn't an activist. I wasn't doing things to make changes. And, you know, I kind of regret that part. Of, of the past me d d for doing that, but I can't, you know, I can't live my life without saying something anymore. We're not giving up, and I want them to know that they can support us from outside the state. Um, and keeping their states safe as well is very important.